All our hands. Beat to quarters. Run out the gun. Stand by this tavern battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Lynn stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire! Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. heights. I still grow dizzy on occasion, much too easily. But once, rather early in my life at sea, I learned that even heights are not one whit so bad as fear, cold fear itself. Our frigate, the indefatigable, had chased the French corvette Papillon into the mouth of the great French estuary, the Gironde. And there we were, prowling like a wolf outside the sheepfold. Uh, uh, and now, Mr. Chad, uh, let's have that chart, if you please. Uh, no, no, uh, the one showing the mouth of the Gironde. I penciled in the positions of the French shore batteries. Uh, pull your chairs down to the same, gentlemen. Our uh, chase, the Papillon, uh, lies just here. Mr. Eccles took the bearings. You've been wondering what I plan to do about her. Well... You gentlemen are going in with our small boats, launch, cutter, jolly boat, to fetch her out. Oh, 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 so that's it, sir. A cutting out expedition, eh? Precisely, Mr. Chad. Mr. Eccles will be in general command. Uh, we've already discussed it. Mr. Eccles, will you kindly outline our plan? Yes, sir. I shall have the launch and Mr. Ross the cutter. And Mr. Chad and Mr. Mason will command the first and second gigs. And Mr. Hornblower will command the jolly boat, as usual. Each boat, except Mr. Hornblower's, will have a junior officer as second in command, of course. Yes, sir, as I was about to say. For the jolly boat, well, that won't be necessary, with its crew of only seven. Yes, sir. We'll be dispatching about a hundred men in all. The Papillon is a ship of war. No merchantmen. Ten guns aside, a crew of two hundred men, no doubt. But we'll be attacking her by night, taking her by surprise. Surprise is more than half the battle, gentlemen. Uh, pardon the interruption, Mr. Eccles. Just now, we're out of sight of land. The French will think we have gone for good. We'll stand in again as far as possible after nightfall. Then deliver the attack at 4.30, an hour before dawn. You see, that means their watch below will have had time to go to sleep. But uh, proceed, Mr. Eccles, proceed. My launch will attack on the starboard quarter. The cutter on the larboard quarter. Mr. Mason's gig on the larboard bow and Mr. Chad's on the starboard bow. Understood? Yes, 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 yes. Mr. Chad must cut the corvette's cable as soon as the other boat's crews have reached the quarter deck. Are you clear, Mr. Chad? Yes, Mr. Eccles, quite clear. Mr. Hornblower, with his jolly boat, will wait until the rest of you have gained a foothold on the deck. Then he'll board at the main chains and ascend the main rigging, paying no heed to whatever fighting is going on on deck. You'll see that the main topsail is loosed and will sheet it home on receipt of further orders. Clear, Mr. Hornblower? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> yes, sir. I myself 
or Mr. Ross, if I'm killed or wounded, will seize the wheel and attend to steering the Corvette as soon as she's underway. The tide will take us out, and the indefatigable will be waiting just out of range of the shore batteries. And that's how we fetch her out. It's uh, very simple, gentlemen. Didn't seem so simple to me. At least not my own part of it. Of course, I should have spoken up then and there. I, I was no main topman. I, I hated going aloft. I was unsure of myself in the dark up there. I was utterly appalled at the thought of finding my way amid strange rigging. And, well, I opened my mouth to point this out. It was my duty to question my own fitness. I'm sure, but, Mr. Holmes, though, What was this that Captain Ballou was saying? It seemed to concern me. And uh, since we're short-handed on midshipmen just now, I'm sure Mr. Hornblower won't mind the rigging job, even if he has newly ascended to the happy state of an acting lieutenancy. <laughs> <laughs> After all, he's younger than most of us, uh, should be that more agile as a consequence, eh, Mr. Hornblower? Well, I, <clears throat> well, I hope so, sir. Uh, of course. Then uh, you don't mind our assigning you as a top man? Well, no, sir. Um... No, no, not, not at all, sir. Well, then, gentlemen, I think that's all. I fancy you should all begin your preparations. Uh, aye, aye, sir. Aye, 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 The sun is about to set. You know your duties, and each of you will find you have plenty to do, I have no doubt. should have had the courage even then to, to tell the truth, to admit my real unfitness for that duty. But somehow already it seemed too late. I, I was hemmed in by my own words. The indefatigable crept in shore through the darkness. The time for the attack came very slowly. Still, it came. The boat crews formed up at last, each man with arms. My jolly boat's crew stood in the waist, awaiting me. Well, <clears throat> are you all ready? Uh, that we are, sir. Are the oars of the jolly boat properly muffled? Aye, sir. And each of you has his own pistol and cutlass? Aye, sir. Very good. Then keep all pistols at half cock. Don't want them going off to warn the French because of nerves. Jackson? Yes, sir. As coxswain of the jolly boat, you'll leave it last. Aye, sir. I, um, I'll mount the rigging first, of course. But, Jackson, be prepared to take command if I, uh, if I fall. I, I mean, you know, well, if I'm killed in this instance, sir. Uh, is that understood? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, good. Well, I think then that we're just about ready to pull away as soon as word comes down from the quarter deck. Begging your pardon, sir. I, I don't feel quite right. Was there? Who was that spoke to us then? Hale, sir. I'm a little worried about Hale, sir. What? He's been acting kind of odd. Oh, is he? Well, what's the trouble, Hale? Oh, I'm not sure, sir. I just, just feel a bit, you know, queer like tonight. Oh, indeed? Well, you're not the only one who feels a bit unsettled, Hale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd belay that, man. Oh, I, I don't mean I'm afraid, sir. Honestly. Just keep your mouth shut. I hope Mr. Hornblower is busy. Look, let's have no more of this chattering. We're about to take off in a moment. Wait for the signal. Stand by the lower boat. All right, sir. Lower away. I do, but I, 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 I can't. You might try pouring water on him, sir. 
There's the bailer, Andy. Sea water will cure almost anything. Too hot. Shut up, you. It's too dark. Shut your mouth. But I... He's out of his mind, sir. That's the truth. Mr. Arbler, sir. Shut up. Sir, so we, we've got to silence him, haven't we? Yes, Jackson, yes, we must. Lives of a hundred men at stake. I know how I can do it, sir. And uh, unship that pillar. Aye, aye, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, what are you up to, Jackson? The only thing we could do, sir, knock him out. until the attack had gained a foothold on the deck of the Papillon. She was a black, looming shape now, just ahead, her spars towering up hugely against the nighttime sky. And because that's where I had to climb, I... I was afraid. Easy, man. Easy, does it? Wait until all four other crews board, I remember. Then all of us are detailed to the rigging. Uh-oh. Somebody's stroke is getting mighty careless up there in the lawn, sir. Who fired? Frenchman? I thought so, sir. Looked like that flash came from the corvette. Oh, they've seen us, sir. They've waken up for sure. So give way, man. Give way. Four muskets. Our boats are right alongside them. Our boys yelling like devils. I steered the jolly boat towards the enemy's larboard main chains, trying to make out what was happening on board as our other crews swarmed over her sides from four different quarters of the ship. In oars. In oars. We put the tiller over and we swelled alongside the corvette. Our bowmen hooked onto the main chains. From the deck above came a sound like a tinker hammering on a cooking pot. The clash of cutlasses and sabers. Now the time had come for acrobatics. I stood up in the stone sheets and sprang for the chains. Reached them with a mad leap and hauled myself up. Follow me, men. We all know what we have to do. Up the shards to the topsail yards. Aye, aye, aye. sir. Shards came into my hands somehow. My feet found the ratlings beneath them. And I began that dreaded climb to the main topsail, locking fingers and toes into the ratlings with a thrust of desperation. The flash of pistol shots lit the seething scene on deck, but I didn't dare look back at it. I kept my eyes from my climbing. Jackson! Get in, Henry Jackson! Aye, sir, I can. I'm right behind you, sir. At my elbow, I felt the futtock shrouds. I transferred my weight to them. It was a long way down to the deck by now, I noticed. Then I hauled myself to the top Miss shrouds and began the last stage of the ascent. The shouting on the deck fading a little in the distance. Then, here I was at last, at the topsail yard itself. My arms gripped it. My feet felt for the foot rope. Felt again, and then... God, what's that, sir? Did you speak to me, sir? Are you all right, sir? Yes, but... Sir, Jackson, there's no foot rope here. There's um, no rope at all. Oh, maybe those Frenchies don't use one. Don't like that, no, sir. A hundred feet above the deck I hung, kicking and squirming with no hold for my feet. Yet the gaskets had to be cast off and the sail loosed. Our whole venture depended on that. I... I... Are you there, Jackson? Yes, sir. Uh, look, are you one of, one of those seamen who could run out along the yards, standing up like a, you know, like, like, like a tightrope walker? Oh, sir, I have done it. Yes, in my younger days, sir. Yes, well, it's it's the only way to reach the yard arm now. I was nothing but a coward. Coward. 
Howell. What'd you say, sir? Nothing, Jackson. It was then that suddenly I remembered Hales, the man who felt, as he put it, queer-like. I'd been stern enough in dealing with him. I'd even condoned his being struck down. And I remembered my refusal to admit that I shared with Hales that that panic and fear. And that thought I, I couldn't bear for one instant longer. It was even worse than the thought of falling through the night down to that deck. Oh. Well, yes, Father Jackson. Uh, Andrews and Carson, right behind you. Aye, sir. I brought my knee up onto the yard, heaving up till I stood upright. My instinct told me not to dally there for a second, though. Come on, man. Follow me out. Aye, aye, aye sir. sir. It was 20 feet out to the yard arm, and I covered them in a few frantic strides. My hands found the gaskets. The men of my crew reached for them, too. Hunter had gone to the starboard yard arm, and the sail came loose like a charm. I felt a surge of triumph. Here was the brace right beside me, and, and I knew what I was going to do now. All right, Jackson. She's loose. And now I'll see her home. You seem quite elated, sir. I am, I am. Sir, you're not sliding down the brace. Oh, why not? Quickest way down to the deck. But, sir, what? Did your hands... Are... Yes, see you below, Jackson. Goodbye! <laughs> was a delirious young fool, excited by the stemming of my fear, carried away by it. And I slid so fast down that rope that well, I nearly cried out in pain. The rope stripped the skin from my hands like peeling off a glove. Uh, I, uh, well, Mr. Hornblower, you plummeted down here like a cannonball. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's get the topsail set, sir. Here yeah, now, you men. Stand by to give a hand with the sail. Lively now. A faint gray dawn was showing now. The signs of battle had almost died away. And I'd been far too occupied to notice. Mr. Chad, sir, is it? Is it fighting all over? Hmm? Oh, just about. It was a well-worked-out surprise, I'm glad to say. We took it in a single rush before the watch below could give the anchor watch much help. We just cut the cable, and now we are... Why, what's the matter, Hornblower? It's only, only my hands, sir. Burn my hands a little on that brace. Hunter. She's lying, too, just out of shot from shore. Oh, I must say, she looks awfully good to me. I got a bandage from the surgeon, sir. Oh, mm. oh sorry, sir. Did I hurt you? No, no, no. I was... Really, I was only looking up there at the main topsail yard arm, now that it's light. Good Lord. Did I... Did I really walk along that? Yeah, that you did, sir. Right handsomely, too. Fair enough. That's fixed. Good as I can do it, sir. That's good. Feel any better? Yes, yes, much better, thank you, Jackson. You know, sir, we got a report that Jolly Boat has lost. Lost? Oh, uh, I... Well, what happened, Jackson? Well, she ain't towing alongside you like the other boats. And, of course, what? we didn't leave no boatkeeper in her. Well, why didn't you leave Wells? He's our boatkeeper. Well, I figured we'd need Wells in the rigging, sir, in place of Ailes, well, seeing as our Ailes was... Well... Why, have... Hales? I'd forgotten all about him. Where, where is Hales, Jackson? He was still in the boat, sir, naturally. And the boat must have come adrift, sir, when the ship went about. Suddenly, my warm feeling of triumph was extinguished. For if it hadn't been for Hales and my remembering him at the right moment, perhaps I'd never have nerved myself to walk that yard. And at this moment, perhaps I, I would be branded as a coward, unfit to be an officer. I think this was my first groping realization of the mysterious extent to which one man's small destiny can act upon another's.
Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers. Thank you.